Greetings, Cycle Hockey fans, and welcome to this, the final episode of the Al Murdoch Show for the 2011-2012 season. I'm your host, Kevin Way, and I'm joined with me, per the usual, by Cycle Hockey General Manager and Head Coach, Dr. Alan Murdoch. Well, Coach, for, uh, I guess, one last time, any, uh, one last time for this season, any comments before we get the show rolling? Oh, man, live. There's so darn much uh, good stuff to share. Uh, I don't know which direction to turn, but uh, we'll try to <laughs> summarize this past season and maybe give a few of the highlights of the upcoming season before the show is done. Absolutely. As Coach uh, handed upon, we still have plenty of things to touch upon. Uh, later on in the show, we'll be joined by Cyclone Hockey Junior, soon to be senior winger, David Kerbaski. Um, I guess first off, with a, as you mentioned, we have a full season of 43 games to look back upon, 28 wins, 10 losses, uh, one OT loss, and four shootout losses. So overall, a pretty successful season and a strong showing from a lot of players over the course of the year, and of course, some of those players, uh, some of the players from the team, received special recognition at the, uh, the the awards banquet on March 24th, which kind of serves as the bookend for the season in a way. Oh, you um, uh, I think uh, one of the areas to start first in cycling hockey uh, focuses uh, on academics first and foremost with the players. We'll uh, talk about the two players that won the James Russo Award for uh, academic excellence: uh, Mike Dobko and Alec Wilhelmi. Talk a bit about uh, about those two uh, two players and what earned them this honor. You know, it bodes well for the future when you can have two freshmen that get uh, straight 4.0, and and uh, not only that, but they were excellent players on the ice too. Both of them defensemen, both of them playing real solid, getting regular rotations throughout the first season. So real proud of those guys. And you know, academics comes first. Uh, I think when we recruited both of them, uh, uh, I can remember telling them and telling their parents that when they come to Iowa State, we're going to focus on academics. So the message must, must have gotten through strong and clear, and we hope to see more of the same uh, in the next three and a half years. Absolutely. And, uh, another word, obviously another big part of uh, cycling hockey is, is playing hard, and uh, another big part is, is sportsmanship. And of course, it can be a fine line for players to play with you know, as much intensity as possible, but stay out of the penalty box and play with that sportsmanship. But... The Cyclones have historically had players who successfully walked that line, and this year uh, that player uh, won in the uh, Edmore Sportsmanship Award, Auntie Halanto. Talk a bit about Auntie as a player and what earned oh, him this award. You bet, you bet. Very, very important that, uh, that you play hard, you play tough, you play physical, which he did, and uh, he played hard all season. Uh, he was one of our iron men that, uh, you know, played every game. And uh, he managed to play well and, and took very few penalties. And I think that was one of the major reasons that he was given the Sportsmanship Award. Uh, Antti Halanto, uh, uh, I'll tell you, uh, you know, we get more players like that, we'll, we'll be home free. <laughs> Antti's uh, he's not the, uh, the biggest defenseman in stature, but it doesn't really matter. I mean, he had actually had some of the, uh, at least in my opinion, some of the best, uh, some of the best checks during the season. So it's, uh, it definitely was encouraging to see Antti's freshman season. And we look forward to what he has uh, down the road. Um, I guess uh, another important part of cycling hockey is we discuss uh, the team awards from this past season and recognize the players who have received recognition at the banquet. Um, we we'll always like to see players improve each and every year, if not each and every weekend. Um, this year, the player receiving the Life Investors Most Improved Player Award, Mark Huber. Um, I would say, in my personal opinion, very fitting, but uh, talk a bit about, uh, about Mark's improvement and what earned him uh, this award. Oh, you bet. Uh you know, he labored, uh, you know, through high school in Minnesota. Uh, wasn't necessarily in one of the great high school programs in Minnesota, but pretty darn good. And, and then he played, uh, you know, spent his uh, time in the Minnesota Junior Hockey League and really worked his way up through the ranks. Uh, never became a real superstar in that league, but, but always worked really hard and uh, I think improved all the way along. Uh, spent a lot of time, logged a lot of ice time, especially his last year of junior. And, uh, you know, that caught our eye. Uh, he chose to spend a year at St. Mary's. And, uh, you know, uh, we were lucky enough to get him as a transfer student. And uh, real pleased with him. Came in with a real good work ethic. He was probably in uh, some of the best shape of any of our uh, incoming uh, new students, new players on the team, and, and uh, real deserving of that most improved uh, player award. Absolutely. On the, uh, the other spectrum, we can talk about New players, now we go to one of the more established players in the entire team, uh, Brian Rooney, the winner of the uh, Raymond Vaillant uh, Spirit Award. Talk a bit about uh, you know, how, how, how it is Brian you know, defines spirit and what he did this season. Yeah, if I were to take all the awards and roll them into one, uh, this would be the one award, the Spirit Award. 
you know, no matter whether we're winning or losing, uh, you know, he was motivating the rest of the team, uh, you know, primarily by his uh, role on the ice. He played very hard all the time. Uh, he played with that spirit that we, we look for, uh, you know, that uh, is named after uh, Dennis Viant's uh, father, Raymond Viant. And uh, he, he just played with a lot of heart and soul all the time. Uh, you know, you get banged up in the sport of hockey, but he never showed any of the aches or pains. Uh, the workouts are always hard on the ice and in the weight room. And even this spring when the guys are starting their weight program, he's out there in, in the gym getting in shape with them because he's going to continue on. Uh, I think uh, he'll be one of the players that'll continue on and play a little bit of pro this next uh, next year. So it'll be exciting to watch uh, Brian Rooney as he goes forward. But uh, you know, the Spirit Award really exemplifies all the awards that we have all rolled into one and and a fitting uh, tribute that uh, Brian Rooney, as captain of our team, got that award. Absolutely. I want to talk about the opposite ends of the spectrum, even further opposite from Rooney than Huber, because Huber is the transfer. It's that one extra year. Uh, Rookie of the year, of course, this year, um, J.P. Kasak uh, had some great achievements leading the team in scoring. Um, talk a bit about uh, J.P. And, and more about, well, because the team had a lot of great rookies this year, a, a fantastic core of freshmen. But talk a bit about what uh, earned J.P. Uh, the Iowa National Guard Rookie of the Year award. Yeah, he was a solid all-around player. You know, we've had players that have played up in Ontario in, uh, in past years, and we've had some great ones, but he's going to rank as one of the best. Uh, came in and really set the pace right from the get-go at the start of the season. Uh, you know, he had a, a battle his way into the lineup and uh, establish himself, and he found one of the best ways of doing that was be, by being one of our leading goal scorer and leaders in, uh, you know, the assists category as well. Uh, so played real hard, excellent skater, excellent puck handler, has a great shot, uh, logged quite a bit of time on the power play. I think we probably could have used him on the penalty kill, uh, but trying to spread the wealth around, so to speak. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, fitting that he was on the all-rookie team in the Central States League as well. And uh, real proud of J.P. Kazak in his first year and looking for three more years of the same. Talk, I mean, you touched upon, actually, my, one of my next questions. With J.P. Uh, you know, winning uh, you know, the recognition CSCHL all-rookie team and, of course, winning Cyclone Hockey's or earning Cyclone Hockey's Charlie Turner Award as the leading scorer, um, you know, how, how great was it to see a, a freshman player step up like that when there were questions like with guys from last year like Mike Liebler graduating to see someone like JP who still has three more years, you know, step into such a prominent role? Oh, you bet, you bet. Uh, uh, you know, he, he filled the shoes of several fellows that graduated uh, that played really well. You know, Pascal was a hard worker and JP played, worked real hard the same way. Uh, Liebler could get timely goals and JP certainly got timely goals this season in just his first year. You know, a guy like Kruger, uh, you know, was uh, uh, you know a pretty gritty player when he when he played for us in Court Bullock, uh, and uh, you know JP has uh, part of the personality traits of uh, a lot of those guys, and and uh, I think he's going to be one of the great leaders down the road in the future for Cyclone hockey, and we want to see him get even more points. Uh, We'd like to see some of these guys step it up to the Tulio range, <laughs> uh, but they'll really have to put the pedal to the metal to get to that level. Certainly the competition these days in the ACHA to not getting any easier, so it would, it'll be certainly be a heck of an accomplishment. We hope to see it someday. JP get that 200-point mark, which is a very uh, very big mark for any collegiate hockey player. Um, even though JP was the team's uh, rookie of the year leading scorer, uh, amongst forwards and defensemen, um, the team did go uh, recognize it, uh, another Ford at the Rod French Award for the most outstanding Ford. That was John Favel. Uh, John was uh, one of our top scorers the entire season. But talk more about uh, John Favel and his game and what earned him, uh, you know, the Rod French Award. Yeah, he, he's a very skilled player. Uh, you know, leaves it all on the ice. He's probably one of the more exhausted players at the end of the game because he does play really hard and uh, leaves it all on the ice. Uh, he's one of the more popular players in just his second year here at Iowa State. You know, he's uh, all the way down from the North Country up in Alaska <laughs> and, uh, you know, really enjoy coaching him. Uh, the players enjoy having him in the locker room. And I think he's another one that will show a lot of leadership in the future. And, uh, you know, uh, a lot of these awards, uh, players have a chance to vote on him. And, and uh, John Fievel, uh, you know, got the players vote this year as the outstanding forward. John Fievel definitely has exceptional wheels. It was uh, at least multiple times a game where we'd see him driving wide 
uh, and then after blowing past the defense and driving the net, so definitely creating a lot, a lot of offense that way. You bet, no question about it. Uh, creates a lot of excitement. Uh, is becoming a fan favorite. I'll, uh, actually, we kind of reach towards the uh, the pinnacle of the I uh, of Cyclone Hockey's awards now. Um, you still have the Larry Stahl Defensive Player of the Year Award, or Defenseman of the Year Award, and then also the Alexander Murdoch Award for Most Valuable Player. Um, this year, that was Brandon Clark, junior defenseman for the team. Um, an alternate captain this year, but we're wearing a different letter next year. Talk a bit about, uh, about Brandon's season and what earned him uh, both of these uh, honors. Uh, Brandon, just quietly behind the scenes in the locker room, uh, you know, showed a lot of leadership, so... You know, he got that A on his jersey uh, through, you know, dedication and respect to the other players. Uh, he'll be our captain this next year. Uh, you know, no question about it. Uh, he was uh, our top defenseman this year, playing very well. He had a real good look at uh, the last World University Games tryouts and uh, just has caught the eye of a lot of people. And, and uh, he was uh, one of the two defensemen on the all-defensive team in the Central States Legion Hockey League. And as far as I'm concerned, if you can get, uh, you know, in the, uh, in the listing uh, on those teams in the Central States League, that's as good as being on the all ACHA team. Uh, and Brandon deserved it. So uh, outstanding defense of the year and uh, most valuable player, uh, Brandon Clark, he's a good one. And Brandon also was the uh, all CSHL second team. So one of the only two defensemen, two players to, you know, the, the, to reach that mark where he was on one of the all first or all second team and uh, all defensive team, Colin Long with Lindenwood, the other one, Colin Long, a mighty fine defenseman himself. So I guess what a what a kind of the community expect from Brandon for uh, yeah, it's already. I I think uh, we've just seen the tip of the iceberg. I think his senior year is going to be his best. I know when we recruited him out of the BC Hockey League, his coach said, "Hey, coach, give him room to grow, give him room to expand. He's a very good student." but he's also a very good student of the game, and he'll be wearing a letter on his jersey uh, before too long, uh, probably somewhere into his second, third year, and, and uh, his former coach was correct. So we'll, we'll take all kinds of players like that out of, whether it's the BC Hockey League, the USHL, the North American Hockey League, Minnesota Junior League, there's lots of leagues around the country, but uh, we'd love to have more players like Brandon Clark. Absolutely. He's one of the best. Absolutely, Brandon Clark, uh, an exceptional two-way defenseman. All right, well, this will end the first segment of the Al Murdoch Show for this evening. After the break, we'll be joined by Cyclone Hockey's junior winger, David Kerbatsky, or one of them, uh, one of the team's very best student athletes. So we'll be back after these brief messages. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to the Al Murdoch Show. Kevin Way, your host here, joined by Cyclone Hockey General Manager and Head Coach, Dr. Alan Murdoch. And on the far left of your screen, or the right of me, David Kerbaski. David, welcome back to the show. Uh, thank you. Okay, you want Coach, uh, I'll actually start with you this segment again. Um, last week, the team conducted its annual call-a-thon, um, which is a big part of every season. It kind of serves as a bridge from the past season to the next season. So uh, talk, we've talked about this a bit before, but I don't think we've talked about well, when the team started it and talk about the impetus of the call-a-thon. Oh, you bet. This is a great event, uh, and it's great to have David Kerbatsky on because he, he was one of the best guys on, on calling, and I think he really gets it that the alums like to hear from us. We've got about 2,500 people that have supported our program in one way or another. Some of them are players, some of them are cheerleaders, some of them are parents, some of them are just plain fans, people that buy uh, season tickets and souvenirs. Uh, but they like to hear from us, and they like to talk to us. Uh, I know our players, uh, when they're making the calls, they get a little bit nervous and they go a little bit quick and they, they get to the punchline real, real quick. Uh, Hi, this is a, you know, and they're going fast. You want to give some money? No, oh, man, get off the phone. They're just happy to get off the phone. But David got real good this year and he's just a junior, so he'll be back next year too. Brian Rooney was back this year. But uh, I, I think it's good. And uh, I've had a lot of our alums that have, have talked to uh, you know, me in the last three or four days, just saying how well the players did this year, uh, saying, uh, you know, the guy like Kerbatsky really exemplifies what they expect out of the hockey program. Uh, you know, David, you know, fits the bill. You take all the awards that were given out at the banquet, you roll them all into one package, and, and he would get that award. He's got outstanding grades. You know, he's, uh, 
He's always on, uh, it seems like at least uh, academic All-American level and, and most often Dean's List. Uh, he works hard on the ice. I don't know if he missed a practice this season. Uh, I think he was at every one of the Ironman. I don't think he'd miss a game. Uh, and, you know, once again, the Ironman. And that's what we look for. Uh, you know, I talked to my good buddy, uh, uh, Ernie Sutherland, up in Winkler, Manitoba. And uh, I, I can always count on when I talk to Ernie, first thing he'll ask me this last two or three years is, you know, how's David doing? How's David doing? Tell me how he's doing. Because uh, he, he knows that David is a good hard worker. He's a good student. And uh, he's pretty popular, you know, in the general public and with the, with the teammates. And, you know, he's traveled all over. He's, he's from California originally. Uh, his folks are from Moscow. I'm always going to Svidania, you know, to make sure he practices his Russian and mine's terrible. Uh, but, you know, he's played all over, all over the world, really, and uh, spent time in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League in Winkler and North American Hockey League in Owatonna. You know, that's where, you know, I sent Weirson up there to put the clinch on him and uh, recruiting and by golly we got him here and we're proud to have him here. Absolutely. Well David as coach mentioned you have uh, now three colathons of experience to draw upon. I guess with that what are some of the uh, the skills you've picked up doing the call colathon that you think will be uh, extremely handy for you in your professional future and then what are some of your uh, kind of favorite memories and experiences uh, revolving around the colathon? Uh, well um, you know my career path is uh, personal training and physical therapy so you know having uh, being able to speak to people is huge. And uh, for personal training, um, one of the big concerns is uh, being able to sell yourself. So um, the call -thon, you're doing a lot of selling. So there's a lot of experience gained there, speaking with people, trying to communicate, trying to find the w right ways to talk to people and get a good conversation going. So, you know, I learned how to learn how to talk, uh, bring up conversation and, um, you know, throw the pitch out there. So. <laughs> sure. hey, Coach, uh, I guess in your experience, what, what sort of uh, mindset does it take, and then also maybe a skill set does it take to, and, and to develop, you know, to be uh, successful with like the call thon and, and things like what David was mentioning in, in one's professional career? Sometimes one of the most important things is uh, the ability just to listen, listen to the person in the other end of the phone. And I could tell, you know, eavesdropping on 12 conversations at a time, uh, David was doing the right thing. He was letting the person talk uh, at the end of, other end of the line. And, you know, if at the end of the whole deal they got around to talking about, hey, I noticed you've given some money in the past, probably want to double it or triple it, he would give them the choice close really well. And uh, he got to be pretty smooth. So, you know, whatever career he goes into down the road in the future, he's going to be good at it because the ability to talk and to listen are very, very important. Uh, I know when we went down to play uh, Lindenwood, uh, you know, he was one of our hardest workers on the ice. But off the ice, he was also talking, hey, coach, if there's any chance I could go by this university, uh, I've got a chance to go to grad school. So those are times I'll go to my way. I'll send the darn bus with him on it, <laughs> you know, if I have to. And I think that's what ended up happening. Yep. happening. Our, our bus driver took him by that university and got to spend a little time there. And unless I'm really shocked, uh, we'll see him at school after his senior year, you know, at Iowa State, maybe down in the St. Louis area. And uh, he doesn't know it yet, but he's going to get that itch, and he'll be calling Coach Murdoch and saying, hey, any connections anywhere? I'd like to play a little more hockey, <laughs> and, and uh, who knows what might happen down the road. But he's got lots of opportunities ahead of him, uh, lots of things that he's capable of doing, and just real proud to have him as part of the Cyclone Hockey Program. Absolutely. I guess, David, with the with these call thons of experience, what, uh, what advice would you give to incoming freshmen for uh, next year's team who might... Uh, be rec being recruited and watching the show uh, online later. Uh, just don't be afraid to talk to people. Um, you know, you're not going to see the other person on the other line. They're just going to hear your voice. So, you know, just have a good conversation. Um, don't bring up the money or ask them if they want to donate right away. Just have a good conversation. And, you know, at the end, just throw it out there and see if they'd be interested. So, uh, yeah, that's my advice is just, um, you know, I, I was scared this year at the beginning, too, when we first started. Um, I wasn't used to it. So. You get those couple of phone calls in, you, you figure out what your, what your groove is. So it um, just takes practice. Absolutely. All right, fans, we have to take one more commercial break for tonight, the final episode of the Al Murdoch Hot Show for uh, the 2011-2012 season. On the flip side, we'll talk a little bit more to David and Coach. So thanks for tuning in, and we'll be back after these brief messages.
Welcome back, Cyclone fans, to the final segment of the Al Murdoch Show for the 2011-2012 season. Kevin Way, your host here with Cyclone Hockey General Manager and Head Coach Dr. Alan Murdoch, because they say it faster to fit it in, and forward David Kerbaski. Um, coach, we talked about this uh, a little bit before, but I guess one last time, talk about what uh, you say were the positives of this past season and the lessons to learn heading into next season. Uh, you know, the most positive thing is uh, we had two teams on campus, the D1 team and the D3 team, that both qualified for nationals, and that's outstanding. Uh, real proud of uh, Brandon Sheehan and, and uh, the work with the D3 players. Uh, they, had, they had probably one of the best seasons ever for our, our second team on campus. You know, we've called them D2, we've called them D3, we've called them junior varsity. Uh, but the biggest thing that we're trying to do is provide people the opportunity to get a good education and play hockey at their level of ability. So, you know, it's my hope down the road in the future that we'll continue with uh, both programs and uh, that they'll both keep growing and showing well and uh, giving that same opportunity. Uh, things like the banquet, uh, we had to have a record crowd. They were setting up extra tables for the people that were there. Uh, that That's great. Uh, uh, Sheehan did a great job with, uh, with his team and, and sharing the recognition. The cheer squad did a wonderful job. Pep band, they were there playing uh, the tunes. Uh, Cy was there. Uh, you know, what a great evening. And, uh, you know, Brian Rooney uh, did, uh, did such a great job. I, I think he's trying to stretch out his senior year as much <laughs> as he can. I've seen him over at the weight room. I, you know, uh, I've already gotten his resume to tweak a little bit uh, in case there's some pro tryout somewhere in the world. But, you know, the bottom line is uh, Cyclone Hockey's become a 12-month-a-year deal. Uh, you know, we had a lot of new people on board this year. Uh, next year, Kyle McDonald will be back for his second year. Coach uh, Sheehan will be back for his third year. Uh, both of them will be going for advanced degrees, uh, and that's wonderful. Uh, you've done a great job uh, as Director of Communications, Kevin, and we're looking forward to having you back this next year. Bigger and better things with all of our, our broadcasts. Uh, you know, from home and on the road. So lots of good stuff. I know we've taken the initial steps and some design on our posters and our pocket calendar and uh, our game program and everything that goes along with that. So just lots of exciting stuff. As always, we'll be in the Visha Parade. We'll be on the fire engine from Kelly. Uh, and uh, that'll be great. Uh, you know, uh, spring semester flies by once nationals is done. It's, it's just like uh, you blink and it's gone. And, uh, you know, I, I know uh, a guy like, uh, you know, Kerbatsky sitting next to me here. You know, if he blinks, his senior year is going to be gone. So uh, I encourage uh, him and all the rest of the guys to enjoy the time they have and, and take advantage of the opportunities. Absolutely. David, as you have that one year left. The team is only graduating one senior, Brian Rooney. So there's obviously a significant potential for a lot of returning players from a young team that won't be quite so young next season. So I guess in your view, uh, how excited are you about next season already and what sort of things uh, do you think the team can achieve? Uh, well, you know, we achieved a lot this year um, when you're looking back at the year before. Um, we didn't have the opportunity to go to nationals uh, the year before. So to be able to have a you know, big group of rookies coming in this year and be able to go to nationals is a huge accomplishment. Um, that just says a lot for the upcoming year. You know, we'll probably have a couple more recruits come in next year and, um, you know, just build off of what we have. So we have a lot of, a lot of strong guys. So it's, I'm excited for next year. Generally. Coach, talk a bit about, you talk about how Cyclone Hockey is a 12-month of the year thing. Talk about some of the, the, the assignments, so to speak, that the players have uh, during the summer. Yeah, I know they all got their manuals today uh, at the weight room uh, of the things they need to do between now and, and uh, August uh, 19th when we get back together, start fall semester. Uh, we brought on board uh, some new people that are working with the off-ice uh, training. Uh, Adam Becker uh, is a new addition. He's wrapping up his degree in kinesiology. And I think we had four or five other kinesiology students out uh, working with our guys in, uh, in the uh, pre-test yesterday and uh, the rest of it today. So, you know, our players, uh, you know, I, I think I counted uh, 21 guys that were at the uh, testing and the, the workout. And you stop and think about it, that's all that we can dress in a game. Uh, so, you know, the recruiting end of it, we'll be working real hard at it, looking for, uh, you know, the best academic students that we can find uh, who also happen to play hockey to fill in so we have the depth. 
We'll probably have 28 players on the D1 team this next year. I anticipate we'll have uh, 25, 26 players on the D3 team this next year. So lots of opportunities. We've lost a few uh, to graduation, uh, but we've still got you know the openings to fill in the uh, the block, the holes uh, where we had some injuries, and uh, uh, we'll keep this uh, program moving forward. And who knows what might be on the horizon? Absolutely. I guess uh, before we go, I think we. Uh Having a, sponsors play a big part of the cyclone hockey, and so we have a, one that's helped make this uh, this show all season possible. We probably to take some take some time to thank him. Oh, you bet. Uh, we've got over 150 sponsors that make our program possible through advertising, promotion, and support. And one of the biggest ones of all is Tom uh, Northrup with uh, Pizza Pit, and he does such a great job. Uh, I think their pizza is the best, maybe in Ames, maybe in Story County, maybe in the whole. Uh, Midwest, I don't know, maybe in the world. Pizza Pit is good, uh, and their pizza is so darn good you can smell it coming in the door at the end of every show, and uh, they're number one. Absolutely. All right, fans, well, that's it for the Al Murdoch Show for the 2011-2012 season. Uh, before I go, or we go, I'd like to thank Jairus Davis and Sean Sears for their considerable work with helping make the show possible, and especially Ricky McFarlane, who's been absolutely uh, indispensable and invaluable in his work in making the show happen each week. So. We'd like to thank you for tuning in to this episode, and during the season, you can follow us on CycloneHockey.com and on Facebook. We'll be back in September on the ice, so have a great summer, and we'll see you then. Good night.